In this video, we're going to be working with the dispersion effect to have a tiger that starts off like this end up something like this. So first what you want to do is you want to copy this layer. You can do that by dragging down to the new layer icon or you can do that by hitting Command J. Labeling this tiger. Then with this one selected the background, you can unlock that, grab your lasso tool, which will be the third tool down, and go ahead and click and drag around him. While the object is selected, you want to right click and do fill, and you want this to be contents, content aware, and push OK. So with this turned off, you can now see that Photoshop has taken away the tiger and has left you with snow, helping to separate out the layer. And you're just going to deselect that by doing Command D. Now with this one selected, go up to Quick Select here and go ahead and select your tiger. If you get some of this extra, go ahead and hold down Option or Alt on a PC and sort of suck that back in. But try to do your best to get as much as the tiger as possible. After that, you want to come up to Select and Mask. And I'm going to go to my Refine Brush and just get some more of that hair. So I'm going to take away these hard edges here and try to get as much fuzziness as I can for the hair of the tiger. I'm just clicking and dragging along here. When you're done, you want to come down to here, Output 2, and you want this to be a layer mask. And go ahead and push OK. And then let's copy that layer. So Command J. So now that we have this, we'll want to right click on the layer mask here and do Applied Layer Mask. We can hide this one and then we'll copy this layer again, Command J. Let's name this one Dispersion and this one just Tiger. With the Dispersion layer selected, let's go up to Filter and liquefy. With this we want just the first tool here, the forward wrap or W, and whatever direction you want the tiger to look like he's dispersing to, that's where you want to put the brush. So I'll want it to go more to the left, so I'm going to click and drag here, giving myself enough room that I can work with it. just clicking and dragging and then I'm going to push OK. So you can see here, the tiger behind here, that's what it will look like. So now that we have this, now with the dispersion layer still selected, we're going to come down here and hover over our add mask and we're going to hold down option or alt and that will fill it with black. Then we're going to come up to our tiger and we're going to add another one here. First we're going to go to our tiger and work off of our mask to sort of paint away um, and add some room for the dispersion effect rule which mo mostly take place here. So right here I'm going to come over to my brushes and then I have downloaded a bunch of dispersion brushes free. Um, I just googled them. And so I, I have explosion brushes, powder, dispersion, um, disintegration. So I have a lot of different brushes to work through plus ones that I've downloaded previously. Um, they're really easy to import. So let's say I went to Google, got free brushes, downloaded them. They're now on my desktop. I come up to this little cog wheel right here and I go to import brushes. 
the brushes will come up wherever they are and they'll look like this blue for Photoshop and you just push open and then they'll come usually in these folders in which then you can toggle down and get those open so first I sort of want to make this path um, in which the tiger looks like he's broken and again these brushes are all sort of experimental what I like to do is just click on them and then this the reason why you're not seeing is because it's so large so I'm going to come up here make it smaller so right bracket makes it bigger left bracket makes it smaller and you can see that it's starting to pick up um, some of the tiger already like if we move that's you know my liquify down there but we are on this first one here so I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna sort of paint him away again I'm on black here I'm on brush I got my dispersion going and the great thing here too is that you can rotate so maybe you have um, a hard edge on one of these brushes you can rotate that so you can hide that hard edge from coming or you can just rotate it in general to get a different view from it so again if I drag this along it sort of looks snow ridden um, looks like he has a bunch of snow on his back actually but I'm cutting him away a little bit let's try this one what's this one look like different brushes is a good thing gives it different techniques you can click and pull a little bit as well that helps fasten your process so you want to sort of break them up a little bit and get rid of that hard edge that's what we're aiming for getting rid of that hard edge but adding texture along with that you can also work with different sizes and just watch out how big your brush is could and could not be. So sometimes they're meant to be smaller brushes depending on the size of your brush and also your Photoshop file. Okay and again I can come up here which are my brushes and just spin this around. So go with the triangle and spin it around. Then I come down to my dispersion and this is a back and forth game. So you might be working from here, you might be working from here. It's really just a balance of the two. And I want to switch this to white so I can either go and hit the broken arrows or I can hit X on my keyboard. And this is where you might want to go like big for some, um, just to see what the brush can do. And then you can go small. Again, you can rotate it. So maybe I want it this way now. And that's good because it all looks like it's coming from like different brushes, right? So go ahead and try some other brushes. Again, just look up free dispersion or free explosion brushes. You'll find a bunch of them. And they're really nice because a lot of them won't have a hard edge because they're meant for this type of thing. And again, you just want to come in here. You want to watch out for your liquify because it is a kind of funky thing. And so you might not want all of those. This is where you can go back and forth also with your black and white. Again, white adds on, black takes away. So, you know, it's a, it's a game play here. And you're going to go and, um, you know, see what's working and what's not working. You want it to look natural. And that can be really hard to, to get at the first go. So, you know, take your time. Again, try different brushes, try different angles, and really work with that. There's no 100% scientific understanding of this. It's a lot of experimentation and it's, you know, by picture and really what looks good. So it's good to add big and small pieces. You want that detail, but then you also want some of that funky, fun, big stuff or like medium brushes and just like hard clicks sometimes really help too. Now let's say this is getting too much here. It's not as freeing as maybe like this big one here. Um, I can go back in and do X on my keyboard and then paint that out again. And that will give it more of a freeing understanding. Or maybe a few times, like right where 
some of these things are at. So, you know, the more space I get it, it's still there. There's still texture, but it's not as big. Because the last thing you want is something that, you know, starts to look like mountains. And again, that can be really hard not to do that because you're just having a lot of fun painting. That's why you need these safe zones here. So you need these masks to save yourself from doing that. And that's really it. So I think this is a good beginning of that. There's more I could do, but again, this is really just a the sort of fuss and detailed center of it. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make sure I'm on V on my keyboard, move tool. Um, also the safe zone. And I'm going to come here, and I'm just going to do and gradient map, which again is not really necessary unless you want to change the colors. Come up here, click that. Again, I have a lot of preloaded ones. You can, of course, again go to Google, look for free gradients, and see what they got going on. Um, there's, you know, a bunch you can do here. Um, I think before I used like a brown green one. So again, I think that was the original one I chose. I really like that; it gives it more of an antique type feel. And there you go. So again, really just working with um, different masks, replicating layers, working with the liquify, and feeling comfortable with brushes and knowing how to add and take away dispersion.